So I'm standing in the van in the dark because I've spent some time running lighting circuits through here and I want to bring you along for the test. This will be the first time I flip a switch to see if I've done the wiring correctly. So let's get to it. Right here, we have a mock-up switch. It's a 12 volt direct current switch. And when I hit it, it should turn the lights on if I've done everything correctly. One, two. Mm okay. I'll be right back. Okay, switch, take two. I didn't have my main power connect turned on. So three, two, one. All right, lights are on. I got three back there, one above my head and two more that way. All right, let's get a quick look at the electrical components of this van. I'm gonna go high level, so if you have questions, please leave them in the comments below. I'll be happy to get back to them or make a, a deeper dive video. So the first thing you'll notice, this is the heart of the system. These are four 200 amp hour lithium iron phosphate batteries from Ampere Time. Um, so that's the heart. Those all feed into this Lynx distributor from Victron Energy. This is a really, really fancy bus bar. So there's a positive and negative bar on there with fuses in between that help connect various circuits through the system. Here's my on off kill switch that uh, I believe it's from Blue Sea switch on and off can kill the whole system 400 amp fuse we're running a lot of current through this because it is a 12 volt system that means the amps are quite a bit higher uh, so that keeps protection over the whole thing in case there's a surge down here hidden under there is a way that i can monitor on my phone uh, via bluetooth it'll send all the data on flows in and out of the system so to get energy into these batteries, there are three ways. The first is shore power. So you just plug up a 30 amp plug on that little twisty guy there. That'll be mounted right there on the wall to the outside. So plug that up, follow the cable into the converter charger. So this takes the alternating current, the 110 volts, and uh, switches it over to 12 volt that will then feed into this breaker through this fuse and into the batteries, or actually through the links distributor into the battery. So that's the first way. Second way, solar. So we're gonna have either 600 or 800 watts of solar on the roof that will feed into this Victron MPPT 150 solar charge controller. Two wires from the solar panels will come in there, feed out of there, into the links distributor, into the batteries. The third way is DC to DC or feeding off of the starter battery in the van. That will be charged by the alternator. So this will bring 40 amps in while I'm driving. Um, I'm not sold on this as a solution. I may end up going with a higher amp charging just direct off the alternator. Um, that seems to be the preferred method or even a second alternator, we'll see. But that comes in off the battery in the front, feeds to the links distributor and boom, back into the batteries. Okay. So then, how do we get power out of these? First, they wire into the Lynx distributor down to this direct current fuse block. This is the load center. So this is the direct current fuse block. Power comes into those through a fuse, out these wires up, and run things like lights and pumps, anything on 12 volt direct current. Second way, battery comes here into this piece here, which is a 300 watt pure sine wave inverter, which will then take the direct current, the 12 volt direct current from the batteries, convert it to 110 volt alternating current, feed it into the back of this, which is the alternating current side. So we've got standard breakers here, just like you'd see in a panel at your house. You got the neutral bus bar and the grounding bar, which will ground to the chassis of the van. These run circuits that will have things like outlets, uh, it will run our microwave, and anything else that just needs to be plugged in. This runs the um, shore power, so when the 30 amps come in, then it goes to the converter charger, that's this piece here. The inverter, the 3001 inverter, will feed this breaker, so when flipped on, it will feed the panel. These two will never be on at the same time, and I may wire in a transfer switch to help with the switchover of power, uh, but I need to make sure that these are never on at the same time. One is shore power, and one is the inverter. The rest of these are circuits. So there is the overly complicated system 
I put together in the van. This took a lot of research, a lot of fun putting it together, and it seems to be working, so I am really pumped. All right, lighting circuits in the van start here at the direct current fuse block. We've got the positive side of the fuses and the negative bus bar right there. So the wire comes out the back, up and over the ceiling, and down to this switch. There are four separate lighting circuits, but they're all landing on this one switch right now because I'm waiting for my dimmer switches to come in. So first circuit will come up off of there, follow the ceiling and go over to the dining area and boom. There's the dining area, light right in the middle. It may remain a puck light, it might turn into a chandelier, who knows, okay? Back over to the switch, up and over. These next two are galley lights, so one, two. That one there will illuminate the fridge and microwave, which will sit in the tower here. This one will be over the kitchen counter, which will sit about over that water tank there. Those will be on a switch. Okay, next. Back to here, up and over. Now we're looking down the hallway. So there, to give you reference, this is the outline of the Murphy bed that will fold down. When folded up, there'll be a hallway straight out the back. And those are the lights for that, both on the same switch. Back here, up and over and into the bathroom. There's the bathroom light. And again, for reference, there's the toilet. That's where it will sit. And then this is the bathroom line. There'll be a little curvy shower door there. Step in, light in the bathroom. Lots of wires, lots of complicated stuff over here, but it all works and that's awesome. A few supplies that have been really, really useful while mocking this all up are these. These are Wago 221 lever nuts. They allow you to very easily clip on and clip off wires to change things around rather than having to twist on the screw kind. These will also hold very securely on the road, so these will be used in the permanent install. These little sticky guys can go on the roof and help me decide where lights need to be positioned. So I've tried out a couple of different layouts, but they, they just stick on and then use a little zip tie. Comes in a separate pack. I got like a thousand of those, a hundred of these and I can just position things wherever I need them to go. They help hold wires kind of along the way to assist the wire runs, keep everything out of the way. These little puck lights are really cool. They're teeny tiny, uh, I think they're two inch, maybe inch and a half. They're dimmable and they just pop into the ceiling. So if any of this is interesting to you, uh, I'm gonna link these products in the description below uh, for your convenience.